<laughs> hey, what is going on, crypto people? Happy Wednesday. Happy Generational Wednesday. Generational Wealth Wednesday to each and every one of you. Wow, what an exciting time to be an early adopter in this new asset class. That is the digital asset space. Man, listen, you and I, were playing a game, my friends. We're playing a game that 99.99% .99 of the masses, they don't even know is being played. And we are winning. We are winning, winning big time. Listen, I'm going to go with the numbers. The market is doing what the market does. Again, happy Generational Wealth Wednesday to each and every one of you. What's up with Corium? What is up with Corium? Bob Ross put out something. Bob Ross of Corium put out that they have a grant program for people wanting to build projects on the XRPL. Do it on Corium, they're saying. Interesting. We're going to go over that. We're going to go over some news on Crypto X. For sure, a lot of interesting kind of crazy stuff going on. You know, the SEC and this $2 billion request for remedies is uh, insane uh, for sure. But we're going to get into that. Uh, interesting, interesting time to be an early adopter. I think I'm going to go over this Rob Paul video with a little debate between Rob Paul and... Um, the gold guy, Peter Shift, Shift, <laughs> Peter Shift. All right, we're going to get into that. Um, uh, maybe we'll get into. We'll cover a little bit of that um, as well. Tom did a really, really good interview, so we'll cover that for sure. Let's get into uh, some of these numbers. I'm going to let some people hop on here. Uh, we're doing a live stream, so for the podcast, so no, we're live. Um, and we're going to let some people hop on the channel. Uh, I know I'm, this is kind of like an ad lib podcast this morning, but I wanted to I wanted to hop on here and do this. Let's go over the numbers. We're going to let a few people hop on. Look, the total cryptocurrency market cap, according to CoinGecko, is uh, two point seven four trillion. We're still we still haven't got back to our previous all time high of over three trillion. Bitcoin dominance is at forty nine point eight percent, according to CoinGecko. Bitcoin is trading at $69,321. Ethereum is trading at $3,516. And XRP is uh, trading at 61 cents. Those are the numbers. Again, this market, this bull run will be about speculation and it will be about narratives. Just got to pay attention to the narratives like RWAs and like meme coins. Look. It is what it is. There's no sense in trying to argue about it and try to figure out why come, how to, and all that stuff. It just, it is what it is, right? The market is what it is. So Pookie's in the building. New Blue Rich is in the building. What's going on? <laughs> I see the color hoodies. Indeed, indeed. So listen, it's just really, really interesting. I'm going to share the screen, I think, uh, and uh, go over some of this stuff from Crypto X. It's just... Uh, you know, it's interesting. It is very, very interesting for sure. Raul Paul's video, I think just the first five minutes of it will be more in line with, um, what is it? Will be more in line with Generational Wealth Wednesday. So let's do this. I'll share the screen here. Let's go over some of the stuff on X right now. Guys, do me a favor, hit that like button on the way in. That would be super, super cool. If you haven't done it already, no worries. Just collapse the chat. Go back and smash the like, then come back and hang out with Crypto Siege and uh, fam. So uh, Dark, Dark Horse put this out uh, about the, the financial services GOP, right? Again, it's just a lot of noise coming from the GOP. Not a whole lot of action. You know, letters. And, yeah, we're sending letters. Come on, Tom Emmer and... Patrick McHenry, come on already. It says here from the Financial Services GOP, Republicans on the House Financial Services Committee and the House Ag House Committee on Agriculture sent a letter to the SEC Chair Gensler urging his agency to clarify its position with respect to the special purpose dealer thing, uh, Promothean's custody of ETH. Got a little thing here. Republicans are holding SEC Chair Gensler accountable. Are they? Are they really? As Stephanie says here, are you really? <laughs> I 
so I don't know. I mean, it, it's it's something to say, but they're not really doing much as far as I can see, Pookie Pookie. And uh, here's my post about this video from the sky. It just really, you know, I, I tried to be as neutral as I possibly can, but ultimately he, he's feel it's coming across as he is a little butthurt. That's what it's coming across as to me. And he's wanting to blame Ripple for that instead of the SEC, instead of um, those people at the SEC who would sacrifice their country for personal profits. He wants to say that it's Ripple is why the price is where it is and why we didn't get to participate in this last bull run. So vet, according to Vet, the hot fix for the XRP ledger automated market maker is now public and Ripple 2.1.1 is proposed. The bug involves how the DEX payment engine routes liquidity through automated market maker pools and order books and some complex payment paths, scenarios that didn't execute as um, intended. What else did he say here? More information to follow tomorrow. In the meantime, please keep not depositing into the AMM. Please keep not depositing. <laughs> yeah, don't deposit into the AMM. So they got the fix out, and obviously it's got to go through the whole proposal and approval process. So we'll see how that goes, how long it takes. Here's some interesting stuff from Metalom and from an attorney. Maybe it's a current attorney. Uh, your guide to other worlds, crypto metaverse, not legal advice, right? Vanderbilt Law, UVA and Vanderbilt Law. Smart guy. He was the guy. Meta Lawman was the guy. James Murphy was calling for the resignation of the higher up executives at the SEC and suggested that former SEC higher up uh, executive do the same thing. So Meta Lawman says, funny as part of the SEC's damages brief in Ripple has to be the 29 pages of tweets, of tweets, 29 pages of tweets that hurt their feelings. <laughs> After Judge Torres issued her summary judgment ruling, check to see whether your tweet was included in the filing. Un freaking believable. They're, they're, they're offended. Their feelings have been hurt. They, they don't care about the $15 billion in value lost because of this frivolous non-fraud case that they brought against uh, the company Ripple, the executives, and the asset XRP. Don't care about that. In fact, let, let us remind you that the $2 billion that they're seeking in remedies is not to pay any investor that may have been harmed. Oh, no, no. They just want to keep that in their own personal coffers at the SEC. All right, so Bob Ross does this here, right? So call for devs. Time to deploy your uh, Bob Ross of Corium, okay? Co-founder of Corium and Solgenic. Time to develop your XRPL projects on Corium and unlock limitless DeFi potential. Let your tokens flow across 100 plus chains via the IBC. Now, I know it was a little back and forth between uh, Bob Ross and some other people uh, with Ripple X in that in this recent spaces, Axelar said that they were the, I don't know if they said they were the first or not, honestly. I listened to it, that they didn't really say they were the first. In any case, it was just kind of back and forth about IBC enable, right? Axelar is going to be doing all this integration and it's going to give XRP and the XRPL you know, this access to the IBC and all these other different chains and vice versa. Um, and Bob and the team over there at Quorum suggested that they said they were the first. Uh, doesn't really matter. Quorum had the IBC um, first for sure. Axelar didn't integrate and didn't partner with Ripple until recently. So uh, I don't know why there is this it always seems like to me that there are people hooking up with the XRPL F or the Ripple X in the beginning, and then things kind of go sideways or they don't get the support that they thought they were going to get from Ripple X. It's it's just to me, it seems it's just it there's just another example of that going on. 
March 13th, the XRPL Quarium Bridge is now live for builders. Designed to leverage the distinct strengths of both platforms, the efficient payment protocol of the XRPL and Corium's advanced capabilities with smart token and IBC uh, interoperability. Again, this is a you know it's kind of another thing, right? Because you got um, Pierce's bill in their thing, right? So it's it's Ripple X kind of you know picks its one and kind of disregards other ones. You know, they went with Pierce's technology and the fact that they're going to bring the EVM sidechain and the uh, X cross chain bridge, X chain bridge, right? So I don't know. But here it is. The Corium Foundation is launching a dedicated grant fund exclusively for Cosmos and XRP developers and projects. Because again, a lot of this is... We'll see. We'll see if people take advantage of this and leverage this. Well, not I mean, because you got a lot of people like the DS guy from Expectar and some others saying that you know uh, that the, the the Ripple X or XRPL don't don't fund them. They pick can pick these, and they it's a lot of that going on. So, and for me, like, why where there's smoke, there's fire. Why is this always? Why is there always a constant complaint about something going on at Ripple X? By people wanting to build on the XRPL. You can't just keep saying it's nothing. It's something. And it ain't just feelings being hurt, right? So it's not a great look. Not a great look at all. Let me get to the chat here real quick. Just not a great look at all. You know what I mean? I don't understand it. I don't understand. Let's do this. Let's do that there. Make sure the chat is live. So that's kind of a big deal, I think. They're starting a grants program. Corium is starting their own grants program. I think it's very, very interesting that they're looking to do it. And I say, you know what? Good for them. I mean, once you once you make your point about it, then you go do something about it. Right. So that's very, very interesting. Lawrence Williams, what's going on, Lawrence? How are you this morning? Can you cover the dev no departure from the XRPL and the ecosystem? From what I understand, they were major developers. They had some very unflattering things to say about Ripple and the foundation. Yeah. Um, I don't know about the unflattering things that they had to say about Ripple and the foundation. I think there was, um, um, Lawrence, I, I know that, um, let me see if I have it. Let me check and see if I have it because I did. Um, let me see if I have it here. Because I did see them saying goodbye, right? So they posted on X uh, that they were leaving. Again, where well, there's smoke, there's fire, right? So let me see if I can't find that thing. Uh Dark Horse probably has it on his thing. I probably would just go to Dark Horse to find it, but I think I had it as well. Yep, here it is right here. Let's see. The end of an era. So let me let's let's go over this article. Let's see what did they have to say here, Lawrence. The end the end of an era. Adieu, XRP. All right. So let's let's share this. Let's kind of go over this and see. Again, you know, like where there's smoke, there's fire, right? Something's got to be going on. The end of an era. The, the opinions expressed in this article are that of the author and do not necessarily reflect those of Dev Nell Productions. So that's important to point out. So this is 
Well, this says it's from Mo Morsi, the CEO, is the author of DevNell Productions. But anyway. All right, let's see. Uh, it's it's time to move on. DevNell Productions will no longer be con contributing to the XRP ecosystem. Before I go into the reasons why, let's first explore some of the ways we have contributed over the last six years. New York City XRP meetup organizer and sponsor Rippled source code contributions, First Amendment from the community, improved the build system, rippled analysis, a, necessary, a necessity for the open source ecosystem, just explaining what they did as a DUNL validator. Uh, nubbed analysis, XRP Intel, the first independent XRP data and analysis project, Ledger City, gamification of the layer one blockchain. Very first recipient, I remember Ledger City. Oh, man. In fact, I think I got some Ledger City tokens. Hmm, interesting. Very first recipient of the XRPL grant, Ledger City Coin, fully, regulata fully regulatory compliant token. Over 10,000 users signed up for the early access pilot. XRP community rep, okay. XRP visit, all right. So a lot of stuff. At Apex talks in 21 and 2022. They did a ripple drop interview. So justification. So after all of this, why are we leaving? After all of this, why are we leaving? It comes down to faith or rather the lack thereof. Hmm. A major catalyst for this action was the decision by the top leadership of Ripple to sell their XRP at the expense of retail investors. I don't understand that, but. Even though the SEC dropped the charges against those individuals, this was a major attack on the community and ecosystem as after all, we all know that. As after all, we all know that. Okay. So they don't like the fact that Brad, Chris, or whoever was selling their XRP, right? I'm... We've seen the million dollar houses and we've seen the cars. And again, these, this was XRP that was gifted uh, to them. So anyway, this action has shown that those at the helm do not believe in the digital assets strongly enough to forsake short term monetary gains. Which are being bestowed on them from the backs of the hardworking community. Sure, they talk the good talk when in front of an audience or a TV camera, but actions speak louder than words. And the lack of transparency and accountability to those whom they completely owe their success to, who they completely owe their success to, speaks louder than any prepared remarks ever can. And, and, and what he's kind of alluding to here is he or she... Uh, is right there are people to build on the xrpl who build stuff on the xrp projects whatever community whatever and then you got a couple of people who became executives right um and you can you you can ask i think fairly well what did you build right so people will say well odl well, who built ODL? Like, who built it? Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Who built the ODL? It's developers, right? And there's a lot, there's a lavish lifestyle going around that is not the developers and or validators. I, right now, I don't know. Selling XRP is selling XRP. The wealth that Brad had prior to becoming the CEO, and the wealth that um, Chris Larson had prior to becoming the uh, you know chairman or whatever. I don't know. Is that where the lifestyle came from? Was it prior to selling their XRP? I don't know. 
I don't know. I do know when you get billions of something for free, right? I mean, let's just keep it a hundred. Let's keep it a buck, as we like to say. They got that for free. For taking a position. I don't know. Do they still get salaries? I don't know. What do you think? But this that's a very powerful statement. This action has shown that those at the helm do not believe in the digital assets strongly enough to forsake short-term monetary gains, which are which are being bestowed on them from the backs of the hardworking community. And that includes the Ripple X devs. Okay. Sure, they talk a good talk when in front of an audience or a camera, but actions speak louder than words. And the lack of transparency and accountability to those whom they completely owe their success to speaks louder than any prepared remark ever can. But the entire fault does not lie with Ripple. Rather, the XRPL Foundation is to take blame. An equal part, if not more. For years, we've watched as that organization, which is mandated to serve the best interest of the large community, sought to prioritize their personal objectives and goals. Also at the detriment of the supportive community. The individual who's up, who have been managing funds meant for general welfare of the ecosystem have prioritized the wallet and proprietary services sold by their private organization, have dedicated resources to a fork that does not serve the interests of those who have worked hard to build the XRP brand and have time and time again ripped off the innovations of others. Hmm. That's not good, Lawrence. And I think that's perhaps so what you're speaking to. Let me say that again. And have let's see. And have time and time again ripped off the innovations of others and passed it as their own. Mm -hmm. We know it. This is in parentheses here. We know it firsthand. Both the XRP forensics moniker and initiative and initiative and the issue asset auditing efforts were pioneered by yours truly. This exploitation, this is the end of the um, parentheses, this exploitation and an overall closed and elitist mentality is nothing short of shameful and brings great dishonor, dishonor to those who are supposed leaders of the nonprofit foundation. Pretty powerful stuff. So finally, we are sick of losing to other assets. XRP is always lagging behind in terms of performance in the markets. And as the old Wall Street adage goes, don't marry a position. You know, I say that all the time. Last I checked, Chris and Brad didn't get on bended knee and ask for my hand in marriage. If one or thinks the eventual adoption by banks will result in price increase, you thought wrong, dude. Mm. What we've been saying. So the proof is in the pudding. A good trader knows when to cut his losses or better yet, get out when he is ahead. Not financial advice. So there it is. So I think this is what uh, Lawrence, was it Lawrence? Lawrence was speaking to. Yes, it is. There it is. Bubba Smith, what's good? Afternoon. Afternoon, Siege. What? Watching on delay. Oh, I appreciate that, Bubba. Be careful out there, bro. So, yeah, that's very um, telling stuff there. Okay. That's very, very, very telling stuff there. And I appreciate you. Because um, I didn't read it. I just... Um, 
uh, I just uh, I I saved it, but I did I didn't read it. But yeah, that's that's very telling. And here's the thing that I will promise you will not be done. I promise you won't be done. And and again, I think it's important. You have to be fair and you, you got to share the good with the bad and you have to and they, and you have to um be fair, right? I mean, this is this is a again, this is not just some new thing, some little small thing. I think the LLCG was their legends of I think that's the same thing. I think it is. But in any case, right? Six years the DNL validator. Um, and they have concerns and they have issues just firsthand. And unfortunately, not enough, unfortunately, not enough of the XRP content creators will cover them, unfortunately, because they want to make it seem like everything is Shangri-La and that Ripple can do no wrong. And, and that's, quite honestly, that is disingenuous that's deceiving right you gotta know knowing what you hold is knowing what you hold that means you gotta know the good the bad and the ugly why are they leaving why are these validators leaving what is the reason it, there's got to be something about how they feel they are being treated there's been rumor after rumor about the xrpl foundation and nepotism there's, here's another validator saying that the, the whole idea of this forked EV, you know, this EVM sidechain that Pierce's is building does brings no value to the asset XRP is what they're saying, even though XRP will be the gas token. So I think it's important to cover those um, as well. Now, uh, oh. unfortunately, the, the loudest mouths of the uh, content creators, Brad Kimes and digital asset investor, they're not going to cover it. So we'll have to cover that because it's important to know the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's important to know what it is that you hold. It's, it's significantly important to mention and suggest that this cloud on title is a real deal. It's a real thing. And although XRP itself has been deemed non-security, you got to ask yourself, how come no price rise? This is the biggest, the biggest win for the history of the digital asset. It's the biggest win for the history of the digital asset. So you got to ask yourself, why no price move? You got to be honest with yourself, I believe, and say, why do you think that is? Now, I don't know about this whole bot thing, and I don't know. But here's what I do know, this whole bot thing and, you know, that let it breathe. Here's what I do know. You get projects building on the XRPL and you build, you create network adoption from viable projects that people want to participate on. You create network adoption. And if you create network adoption of the XRPL, you create demand for the native asset of that blockchain, which is XRP. I can share with you example after example after example after example. Avalanche, Solana, you can just Ethereum, you can pick them. Pick one. That is the case. It wasn't banks. It wasn't institutions coming to save them. And all of this, it, it just wasn't. And we got to accept the reality that the, the onboarding of banks, slant institution, all of that stuff is out of Ripple's control. They have to play along with the rules. And if the top eight, 10 banks are trying to slow this thing down as humanly possible, what does that mean for you and I? How much long can they slow it down? Is it another five years? Is it another eight years? Is it another 10 years? Cool. And if you're good with that, cool. Ralph Paul says in his video that we got about six years before this whole new financial thing changes. And these big time gains probably won't be available. Now, it might be eight years might be 10 years, but you understand my point. In other words, we only got so many bull runs. That's why it's important to be diversified because we only got really so many bull runs with these, I think, extraordinary gains.
So Lawrence, thanks for reminding me about that. I appreciate that. Appreciate that, bro. So that's some interesting stuff. And, and you know, it's not like, what are we trying to protect us? We can't take it. You know, you, you know, uh, you know, Brad Kimes would think that, oh, you know, Brad Kimes and, you know, negativity, Zach Rector always talking about negativity, no negativity. You, what you can't deal with some negativity. I mean, this is this is a dude speaking and saying that this is what happened to him. This is his thoughts, but they won't share it. They won't share it under the guise of no negativity. No, it's important to understand the real. You, but they, they, but in the same breath, they say no. What you hold? Well, that this is part of it. The XRPLF, Ripple X, Ripple, part of it. That's part of knowing what you hold. You know, it, it's part of that. So, but again, yesterday's live stream, I said that, you know, in my humble opinion, Ripple should have followed the playbook of Flair. And they should have had a Dow governance strategy in place. And they didn't do it. That would be, you know, turned over to the community. And they didn't do it. So it's important to understand that. Will I, will I be selling my XRP anytime soon? I don't know. I might. Right now, I don't know. But I do, here's this, right? You, this, this saying we have, go to where your assets are treated best. Go to where your assets are treated best. I haven't heard a video yet saying that after these court documents came out, I haven't seen a video yet saying that, well, that's not selling to the community. Now, and I get it that if they hold uh, dumping on the community, I get it if you have an asset, you can sell it, but there is a difference. Right. There are these are assets that were gifted as opposed to you and I when we get an asset and we sell it. I no one means no one says that's dumping on the community. They're they're different. So maybe that's what they mean by dumping on the community. They got something for free and they're selling it. Maybe that's their definition of dumping on the community. Right. Uh, what I said is you and I, when we go to an exchange to sell, we never think we're dumping on the community, right? So maybe we're dumping on the community without them explicitly explaining what that is, is the fact that those executives got that XRP for free gifted to them, right? And so it, so what do you think that is? I know for a lot of people, it's tough to see these lifestyles of these executives. You know, I mean, in particular, Brad and Chris, and they're struggling, and the other and the other XRP holders are struggling. I mean, that's a reality. So, anyway, I want to let you guys listen to this few minutes here from. Uh, let you guys listen to this few minutes here from. Uh, now, why did that change? Is it here? Oh, there it is. There, okay. Let's do this. Let's share this from Raul Paul. This is something, again, so hugely important to understand what's really going on. I'm not going to play the whole thing here, but uh, let's go here. Let's go. Tom Bayou asked uh, Raul Paul to, ex to explain why he is pro-crypto. Okay. And what we found since 2008 you are being slaughtered and you don't realize this. There could be a dollar crisis. They're debasing the currency by 15% a year. I mean, it is inevitable that it's going to happen. But does that just mean that we're crazy and that it's going to be fine? I'm not saying everybody is wrong. I'm saying that people that believe in Bitcoin are wrong. You're missing the point. But why the hell would anybody buy these? These are obviously going to go to zero. I'm not concerned about the cliff of death. How do we make sense of these numbers? Or is this a guaranteed slaughter and we just don't know when? The tension between the way the two of you think has been really instrumental in helping me and I think countless others um, build a worldview that will help them navigate uh, different moments in the economy well. Um, I think right now we're going through a period of just massive transition. And so I come to the debate between um, crypto, not crypto with that in mind. So to oversimplify your guys' stances, um, I see Raul, I see you as pro-crypto. Peter, I see you as 
anti-crypto. I know those are really gross simplifications. So I'd love to start with, Raul, if you could walk us through your position. Listen to this, um, guys. How you see crypto, why you think it's valuable, and then Peter will come to you for your take. Okay, so I am I think we will both agree that things are pretty screwed up. We'll all agree. But what is really screwed up is the world is massively in debt. The workforce is shrinking. Population growth is slowing down. It's slowing down GDP growth. So there's not enough GDP growth to pay or service the amount of debts out there. And what we found since 2008, that the answer to this debt issue has been printing of more money, debasement of currency. People think of it in terms of, at first they think it's going to be inflation, as in the price of CPI goes up, but it's actually not. It's actually something much worse, is wages don't rise, but assets go up, because optically you're debasing the currency. Your future self is getting poorer, because assets are all about storing wealth for future deferred consumption. But what's happening is you can't afford as much of that now. And so your future self is in fact poorer. So a classic example is a 35 year old now in the United States, getting married, having kids. A house is very expensive now. Compared to when Peter and I were young, it was relatively cheap, three times incomes. Now it's like 10 times incomes. So there's no real way of getting up the ladder. The equity market is much more expensive. Your kind of percentage share of the S&P is so much less. So the advantages that your parents had are not available to you. So that's a problem, at, a problem for society overall is this issue of debasement of currency. The governments are doing it because there's no way of paying the debt. So what you're going to have to do is continue to print money. So then if that is the case, and I found out in this everything code analysis that I've talked to you about, what we found is since 2008, they reset interest rates. It's like a debt reset. The debt jubilee happened. It was everybody was given the chance to not pay interest. And everybody reset their debts on this three to five year time horizon. And so four years is the middle and we've got this perfect four year cycle. All assets are now incredibly correlated with this cycle whether it's emerging markets, whether it's the dollar, whether it's rates, whether it's crypto, whether it's gold, whether it's equities, everything. So if we've got a super correlated environment where asset prices keep going up because of debasement of currency, i.e. the optics, because the value of the currency is going down, then your job is to find something that offsets it. So the rate of debasement, by my calculation, is about 15% a year on a globalized basis. So your hurdle rate is 15%. Now, Equities have done something not far off that, but that just means you're not actually making any money. You're just actually just standing even. still. Right. NASDAQ, right. NASDAQ, which is in a secular trend, has actually beaten that 15% hurdle rate somewhat. So it's actually helped. The traditional way of doing it would have been gold. And you know, I've been a long-term gold investor, I've always liked gold, but gold has not done particularly well in recent years against debasement. On a globalized basis, it still works beautifully well as a global currency. And against global debasement over time, it works. But the really strong debasement we've been having in recent years just hasn't done well enough. And many of us from the macro world started thinking, okay, we need to find what is this hedge? What is the right way of doing this? And that's where crypto, which I've been involved in for a long time, started to really fit in here because it offers a bunch of ways that the financial system can use it in an overly indebted system where you've got collateral and then like 30 uses of that same collateral. So nobody owns anything. You own a fraction of what you think you own in an indebted system. Same with a bank. You have money in a bank. It's not your money. It's actually the bank's money. And that's you got money in the bank. It's not your money. It's actually the bank's money. I, I know you guys have heard me say that over and over and over again. This is why I have a big time problem with XRP entertaining content creators constantly promoting traditional financial products and ultimately digital assets is the win. Absolutely is the win. So Raul shares some stuff that's really, really good. I highly recommend you guys check that video out. Let me get the... Uh,
Let me get the link to that. I'll put it in here. It's a little debate. Raul Paul has been putting out some really, really good stuff recently with Real Vision. Does a really, really good job. Put this here. That's to give you, I think, it's a really good explanation of what's really, really going on. Essentially, what he's, he's saying is that since the wages aren't increasing and your ability to buy assets is becoming more and more and more and more difficult, or because of the basement of the dollar is just, just of all fiat currencies is 15%. It's probably at least 15%. You, you, you have to have an asset that you can own that is outpacing that. And the S&P is not doing it. The Nasdaq is barely doing it. Gold is barely doing it. So if if it's barely doing it, 15, maybe it's 18%, maybe it's 20%, right? Maybe it's 25% for the Nasdaq. But that's not the digital asset space. Bitcoin, since its inception, since its inception, has done 455,000 percent. That's why um, uh, Raul Paul says, Raul Paul and Dan Tapiero, by the way, both said the greatest macro trend in history is Bitcoin and crypto. It's the digital asset space. That's the shot. That's why I say in my outro all the time, the digital asset space is our chance to win. Other stuff is just not keeping up. It's not just, it's not keeping pace. That is ultimately uh, the bottom line. And we can own these assets. And do we have to go through to or through, you know, three or four year bear market? Sure. And all we have to do is just play the bull market the right way and prepare for the bear, right? Get that little lifestyle bank um, set up and adjusted, right? Set up and working for you in preparation for the bear where you can get these more of these assets at a discounted rate and you just kind of continue and you just kind of continue building up the lifestyle bank, right? And we did a video on that. I hope you guys will check that out. I'm preparing for uh, the bull market, right? Lessons learned. I know I get it. The 2017, 28 thing for most XRP holders uh, was not great because people didn't know how. Next bull run, we didn't get to participate because of the technically the SEC lawsuit. Now we got this one, right? So, but in the meantime, you got to understand three or four years of, and then not being able to participate in this past 21, 22 thing because of this lawsuit. You still got the wage situation. You still got, you know, inflation. You still got the debasement going on. You know, that's why I think what Jimmy Val Hill is doing, Jimmy Valley at Val Hill Capital is doing, um, is important because there is there was a recognized cloud on title that wiped out $15 billion in value from retail investors. And that cannot just be uh, overlooked and or understated. So, uh, and the long and the short of it is the digital asset space is our shot to win. And we got we can't be married to just one digital asset as much as we may love it and this technology. And for orders to, in order for us to win, we gotta have a diversified portfolio, in my humble opinion, in this market, I believe is gonna be speculative stuff like meme coins and AI narratives. And uh, so meme coin narratives AI narratives and RWA narratives. So not financial advice is for sure, but I would I would look into those narratives and look into those plays. AI, RWA, mean coins, those are the narratives that are leading the market. All you got to do is go to CoinGecko, Coin Market Cap, and you can see those plays, AI plays, RWA plays, meme coin plays leading the market. All right, fam. So there it is. I wanted to hop on here and say, hey, do a little off the cuff in impromptu live stream uh, this morning to share some stuff with you. I hope it's been valuable to you. Do me a favor. Hit that like button on the way out if you didn't do so on the way in. I'm going to end this live stream like I do all of my live streams and remind you guys of this. Old money doesn't want you to win. But that's OK, though, because you and I, we're already winning. And I would ask you to consider this, perhaps ponder the idea or notion of living your life 
permissionless. I'll talk to you guys soon. See ya. Bye.